This video is sponsored by Incogni. Click the link in the description or use code BAGEL to get 60% off an annual plan. Hey everyone, it's Richard, watching The Plain Bagel. Tokenization has long been a popular idea within the crypto community. Uh, the idea that people could use blockchain-based tokens to trade and represent ownership of uh, rights to real world assets, including everything from real estate and music royalty rights to Pokemon cards and bad art. While the latter idea around NFTs maybe didn't uh, go so well, the concept has once again made its way back into the news cycle, uh, with the focus this time being on tokenizing investments. You see, on Monday, June 30th, Robinhood, the US-based zero commission broker, saw its stock jump nearly 13% to a new all-time high after announcing a slew of new crypto and tokenization offerings for its European customers at a keynote event in Cannes, France. And in addition to introducing new staking capabilities and three times leveraged tokenized perpetual futures contracts for cryptos, uh, because at this point, why not? The company also launched tokenized stocks for over 200 US-based businesses and ETFs. But what was more attention grabbing than the ability of investors to buy tokens on the blockchain that represent underlying stocks rather than uh, just buying the stocks themselves was that some of these tokens represented private companies, with Robinhood actually gifting five euros worth of tokens for OpenAI and SpaceX to new eligible users, companies that otherwise are not publicly available to invest in. And what's really interesting is that these companies had nothing to do with this. Uh, in fact, not long after the announcement, OpenAI tweeted out against the tokens, highlighting that they were not involved and did not endorse them. Which naturally raises a few questions. How exactly do these tokens work? What's the point when it comes to publicly traded stocks? And how exactly do you sell stock-like investments for companies that haven't otherwise authorized it? Well, we'll talk about all that in today's video. We'll also touching on the broader implications this might have for investing, specifically when it comes to private investments, because online, it's quite a controversial discussion. But before getting into all that, let's start with the basics. What exactly are these tokens and how did they work? Well, there are some differences between the uh, tokens for the publicly traded stocks versus the private companies, OpenAI and SpaceX. Uh, but we'll start with the discussion of the public tokens uh, to explain how everything broadly works. Essentially, these tokens represent a derivative agreement that you you are entering into with Robinhood, uh, whose value is based on the movement of the underlying or reference position, uh, with Robinhood promising to pay you any price return of the underlying stock, uh, plus any dividend paid when you decide to close up the position or sell the token. Robinhood then uses the money from selling the token to go and actually buy the underlying stock itself to hedge its exposure on a one-to-one -one basis, meaning effectively that you're buying a cryptocurrency token that represents a derivative that represents a stock, with the return sort of flowing through uh, back to the token when you go to sell it. Now the tokens themselves are issued on the Arbitrum blockchain, which is a layer two that's built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. And they are currently non-transferable and non-assignable, meaning that you can't trade them with other investors. You can only buy them from Robinhood, at which point they will create or mint uh, new versions of this token and sold back to the company, at which point they will close out the contract and destroy the token. The derivatives are also cash settled only, meaning that you can't uh, redeem them for the underlying stock or ETF like uh, other types of derivatives. They can only be closed out for cash. But Robinhood highlights that these tokens can be bought in small denominations, are accessible 24 hours a day, five days a week, with plans to eventually move towards 24 seven trading when Robinhood eventually launches and switches the service over to its own blockchain. And one of the biggest selling points here is that Robinhood does not charge a commission fee or any additional spread to trade these tokens which in the European Union is a fairly attractive selling point given that trade commissions are still quite common. Interactive Brokers, for example, still charges a minimum three euro fee under its fixed pricing model in France, for example. Albeit there is still an explicit currency exchange fee of 0.1% when trading these cryptos, which we'll circle back to later. So that's how the Robinhood stock token works in a nutshell. It's an investment that mirrors the performance of a publicly traded stock. Uh, what about the private companies? How exactly how? <laughs> how is Robinhood doing that? Well, here Robinhood is effectively doing the same thing, but using its own stake in a special purpose vehicle that is a partial owner of these businesses. Uh, while these companies are private, they do typically still sell shares between large institutional or private investors. Uh, just it's not done on an exchange like we typically would do with public stocks. And Robinhood at some point became a private investor in these companies and is using its own personal stake to back these tokens. But compared to the tokens for the publicly traded stocks, because there's no market for for uh, the SpaceX and OpenAI equity, uh, because Robinhood's own investment in these entities can't be partially sold whenever it wants, the private tokens being gifted to investors here 
can't actually be closed out by the user. With Robinhood highlighting in its terms that the tokens cannot be sold, transferred, or otherwise traded unless and until Robinhood makes this functionality available, which it intends to do so if these companies eventually go public or if Robinhood eventually sells its stake, at which point it has the right to redeem the tokens for the cash value. In other words, these private company tokens are essentially just a promise by Robinhood to distribute any proceeds that it may eventually realize from its own private equity investment in these companies. Until then, however, there's not a whole lot that investors can do with them, with there currently not even being a way for investors to buy more of these tokens. So while the idea of being able to invest in these promising private companies that uh, make the headlines all the time is pretty interesting, right now you can see it is a fairly limited offering, which is probably why the tokens were gifted here rather than sold, since it seems to be a bit of a soft launch where the functionality hasn't really been built out yet. But nonetheless is an example of a company embracing this tokenization vision uh, and applying it to the world of stocks, with there seemingly being plans to push this offering much further. With the Robinhood team highlighting plans to eventually tokenize everything from real estate to art on their Robinhood blockchain. Something Vlad Tenev, the CEO of Robinhood, even alluded to earlier this year in a Washington Post op-ed titled, An Investing Revolution is Coming, the US Isn't Ready for It, where he argued on the merits of replacing traditional processes with tokenization. In regards to stocks, for example, Vlad highlighted that tokenization could present a competitive alternative to the traditional IPO process. Not just giving companies an alternative way to access investor funds, but allowing small retail investors to access companies that had previously only really been available to the ultra wealthy. You see in the US and many other countries, certain private investments require that you be what's called an accredited investor to access them. Uh, meaning that you meet a certain threshold of either wealth, uh, income or professional expertise. With in the US, the wealth threshold being $1 million in investable assets or $200,000 in annual salary, 300,000 if combined with your spouse or partner. Something that while intended to protect small uninformed investors uh, from the high risk nature of private investments. Also, according to Vlad, locks out 80% of the US population from an area where, as he puts it, the opportunity for upside is greatest, specifically around venture capital and startups. Vlad also argues that the traditional IPO process is only really feasible for larger companies. And because of how encumbering it is of a process, it's pushing companies towards staying private, thereby locking out most investors from accessing them. So while the concept of issuing a security of sorts uh, on behalf of a company that hasn't endorsed it is obviously controversial controversial, there are some who are very much in favor of this move, with some arguing that it pressures private companies to explore going public or just otherwise, if embraced, gives retail investors access to some of the most promising technologically advanced companies and industries out there. That being said, there are also a lot of criticisms, drawbacks, and uh, potential roadblocks that investors could face using these types of instruments. For one, while the big selling point for the public stock tokens is the cost, trading these tokens isn't always inherently cheaper than just buying the underlying position even in the EU. You see, despite Robinhood EU accounts operating in euros, all the stock tokens here for this European offering are actually priced in US dollars. And as mentioned, Robinhood charges a 0.1 FX fee, meaning that buyers will accrue this expense every time they trade on the platform in the EU, which relatively speaking is still a low cost, reflecting just 10 cents on a $100 investment, for example. Before larger amounts like say $5,000, it can make the offering less attractive than what you would have to pay at a traditional broker to buy the stock outright. Secondly, there's a pretty meaningful opportunity cost to these tokens when the underlying stock pays a dividend. Because in addition to foregoing any sort of voting right that you would get otherwise as a shareholder, any dividends that the underlying stock pays is only redeemable when the contract is sold or closed out. Meaning that until you sell the position, you can't access or invest any dividends that the position would pay, which is a pretty meaningful disadvantage to just owning the underlying stock and likely something that gives Robinhood a lot of benefit here, given that they'll be sitting on the cash and able to invest it themselves until the positions are closed out. And while yes, you could simply close and re-enter contracts to redeem the dividend each time it's paid, that would mean more FX fees and would generally be pretty tax inefficient, forcing some investors to realize capital gains just to access their dividends. And the whole tokenization setup really introduces layers of risk in addition to the underlying risk that comes with the investment without much upside to the investor outside of maybe saving some upfront costs. Something Robinhood even acknowledges in their key information document where they classify the product as facing a seven out of seven risk regardless of the underlying asset. 
Because now, instead of just depending on the underlying investment doing well, you also depend on the Arbitrum blockchain, Ethereum, and because Robinhood is your main counterparty, even Robinhood's success. With Robinhood disclosing in its terms, quote, poor market conditions are very likely to impact our capacity to pay you. There are also currently fewer investor protections that come from this tokenization route. Uh, the product is not subject to any investor compensation or deposit insurance, uh, which is fairly standard for typical brokerage accounts. And interestingly, Robinhood doesn't even guarantee that the private tokens will be backed on a one-to-one -one basis with its private stock assets, which is pretty strange. And again, probably why the company isn't actually selling these tokens at this time, uh, but rather gifting them, given that it can't make guarantees around I guess the, the accuracy of these tokens. Thirdly, a big disadvantage for the private tokens is that it doesn't seem like buyers will actually have access to any company information besides what's already publicly available. You see, one of the reasons why going public is such an expensive process is that it requires ongoing disclosures and reporting so that investors are fully informed. But through the tokenization process, there doesn't seem to be any obligation from OpenAI or SpaceX to provide any disclosures to token holders because as Vlad has highlighted himself in response to OpenAI's complaint, the tokens themselves don't actually represent equity in the business. Meaning that people who hold these tokens have no concept of how much money the companies are making, uh, the health of their balance sheet, the growth they're achieving, any basic information that would allow them to analyze the positions. So while Robinhood may have access to this information, they likely won't be able to disseminate it uh, unless the companies sanction them to do so, which also puts the investors at a big disadvantage to Robinhood, considering that there's sort of this one-sided information available and Robinhood is the only counterparty you can transact with here, with even the value of the tokens being entirely based on Robinhood's own internal appraisal. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, there's a whole question around whether any of this is even legal, or whether we'll eventually see regulators crack down on this sort of structure. With us actually getting the news this week that Lithuania's central bank, which is where Robinhood Europe is registered, is reviewing these private tokens following OpenAI's complaint. Because while derivatives basing their value off of a given stock, despite no one having any involvement with the company itself, is not anything new and uh, certainly not illegal, it does seem like this whole setup is just intended to allow people to invest in companies while avoiding traditional regulations which could cause some problems. As Vlad Tenev highlights in his own op-ed, there are already services available that allow retail investors to invest in private companies. He specifically mentions Equity Zen as an example, but even the higher level vision of tokenizing world assets can technically be accomplished with traditional securitization methods. With companies like Masterworks known for securitizing artworks and selling shares to allow for fractional ownership. But Vlad argues that users still face accredited investor requirements with some of these private offerings and that traditional IPOs put too much of a burden on institutions when it comes to reporting and costs. But we've seen regulators crack down on equity-like offerings in the past because if it looks and smells like a stock and people are buying it for that intent, then that can still lead to a crackdown. It seems like this offering will force regulators to address the gap in crypto regulations to either add more guardrails in the space or just prevent this type of activity. Now, Vlad is correct in highlighting that the IPO process has become bloated and labor intensive over the past two decades. And there are a lot of middlemen fees involved with the process that can cost companies millions, if not billions. But that's not inherently preventing small companies from going public. Uh, there are plenty of tiny companies who don't even earn revenue that are trading on stock markets. Companies may instead prefer to remain private because yes, there's less scrutiny, but also because there's less volatility and public pressure which can be tough to deal with when you're, for example, a startup that's trying to find their footing. And it certainly doesn't seem that buying private stakes in businesses that want to remain private and then turning around and tokenizing the ownership uh, will be sustainable when the companies don't want Robinhood to do that. Private companies often have very explicit shareholder agreements that mandate how an equity can be handled, uh, when you can buy, sell, and, and who you can buy and sell uh, the equity to. And while Vlad has argued that these tokens aren't technically equity, if, again, it looks and smells like a stock, we could see legal pushback from the actual companies. Now, again, Robinhood is currently only gifting these uh, private company tokens to eligible users, so the implications are pretty limited at this moment. It does seem like the company is sort of testing the waters uh, while trying to avoid a class action lawsuit. And to be clear, there is a lot of room for innovation in the traditional finance sphere. Stock trading still follows a pretty archaic and slow process, and rules that help level the playing field for retail investors would certainly be great to see. But there are a lot of questions that remain about the sustainability and viability of this offering, whether it will catch on, and if regulators will crack down. With it, as of right now, not really looking like the service can feasibly launch in the United States. That being said, the US does currently have a more crypto-friendly administration, and we'll have to wait and see how things ultimately shake out. Whether this idea catches on or becomes the next sort of 
NFT. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for joining me today. Before I sign off, I do want to give a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Incogni. In today's internet age, much like how Robinhood is selling something of OpenAIs that the company did not approve, there are thousands of data brokers who are collecting and selling personal information of people to others online, including names, addresses, and even at times more sensitive information like social security numbers, which as you can imagine can lead to a few problems, including spam and even identity theft, as this information has in the past made it into the wrong hands. But that's where Incogni comes in. Individuals are legally entitled to have their data removed from these types of databases, and Incogni automatically sends out requests on your behalf to over 250 data brokers to take down your information, saving you the time for making 250 angry emails or phone calls and doing so on a repeat basis so that once your information is taken off of these sites, it stays off, which can help reduce things like junk email and even spam phone calls. But on top of that, Incogni now offers the custom removal tool with its new unlimited plans that allows you to input URLs for web pages that are exposing your personal details so that Incogni can work towards taking it down when legally appropriate. In the past, for example, I've found my own personal email circulating on websites selling contact information for influencers. Uh, and if you Google yourself, you may be surprised to find your email, phone number, or other details on one of these sites. So now in addition to the 250 plus data brokers, Incogni can help you with these specific situations to ensure that your data stays off of these types of sites. It's an easy to use service. It takes just minutes to set up. And if you'd like to try them out yourself, you can click the link in the description or use code bagel to get 60% off an annual plan. Thank you, Incogni. And thank you guys for joining me today. If you like this video, please do make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does help the channel tremendously. And let me know your thoughts about tokenization in general and more specifically the Robinhood token offering, uh, whether you think it's a great idea, whether you think it's a strange violation of these companies' rights, what would you like to tokenize in your house? Uh, any and all thoughts, welcome down below. Uh, thanks again for joining me, and as always, be safe out there.